Welcome to Love Set Run. I'm Andre. And I'm Sierra. Join us as we backpack around the world, leaving a footprint of love everywhere we go. We'll show you how you can consciously volunteer on your travels, how fun and rewarding it is to give back, and how you too can make a difference in the world. Our journey continues from Bandipur through the suburbs of Nepal to the city of lakes known as Pokhara. Although cramped and somewhat uncomfortable, bus rides through Nepal are an adventure unto themselves. Watching the scenes of everyday life go by out the window is fascinating. Our next five days in Pokhara is all about rest and relaxation before our big Himalayan trek. Staying connected while in Nepal depends on being able to find SIM cards for Andre's cell phone. Fortunately, most roadside vendors sell them. Having a working phone here was crucial for us. A friend we made in Bandipur recommended that we stay at his friend's hotel in Pokhara, so we hopped in a cab and headed to our first destination, Fishtail Villa. Looks nice! Our first evening in Pokhara, the electricity went out, leaving us with dinner and a spectacular lightning storm spectacle. With nothing on the agenda besides walking around town, we headed down to the beautiful Fewa Lake to explore. That is, until... We made it out the rain just in time. We were on a walk, we felt some raindrops, we decided to take cover, and we started boiling. Well, we were just sitting here, and a chicken jumped up on the table. Hope that's not my dinner. It's the little moments like this that are part of what makes traveling the world so intriguing. We're only in Pokhara for a few days with the intention of relaxation. Once again, we're off. So we decided to treat ourselves a bit and transfer to a hotel with a few nicer amenities like... King size bed oh my god. An actual bed mattress. We have a view. Whoa. We have air conditioning. Oh my god. Work. Work. Walking back into town, I was lured by a kitten crying. I just couldn't help myself. Oh, poor baby. I don't know where your mommy is. While recording a video recounting our time in Bandipur, a woman selling fruit came up to us and insisted that we buy some fruit from her. And I mean insisted. For several minutes. And when we agreed she wouldn't let us buy just one piece, she loaded up a whole bag for us and kept adding more fruit. The longer we haggled, the more the price went up. It was quite the entertaining interlude. We had to extend our visas while here, which led to a trip to the local immigration office. While here, we discovered that the woman working there didn't speak English, and our visa paperwork must be filled out online, then printed and signed by an officer who wasn't there yet. We also needed copies of our passports and extra photos. Fortunately, a kiosk next door helped us with these details. A little bit of head scratching and waiting, but we got the job done. Whew. With that out of the way, we decided to go check out the World Peace Pagoda, a Buddhist monument perched high on a hill overlooking the lake. One of 80 such peace pagodas around the world, its creation was inspired by a Japanese Buddhist monk who, after witnessing the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, was filled with a sense of urgency to spread the message of peace around the world. Although there were quite a few other tourists around, it was a beautiful place to spend an afternoon taking in the sights of the lake and city below. For dinner tonight, we found a Tibetan restaurant called Patala. It's a family-run restaurant, which meant their five-year-old daughter, Ruby, kept us entertained while we waited for our food to come out. Do you like Momos? Where's Ruby? <laughs> oh, I found it. Some of her hijinks included pulling Andre's leg hair from under the table, and a time sitting on my lap making faces. Her rascally nature was a delight. <laughs> Let's go paragliding! Paragliding! 
Pokhara is the paragliding capital of the world, so we couldn't resist. We're ready to go paragliding. I'm so glad we decided to make the trip to Pokhara. It was just the sort of R&R we needed before embarking on the next leg of our adventure, a 16-day trek around the Everest region. Be sure to tune in to our next episodes as we take you high into the Himalayas.